What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, and that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, you've come to the right place. So, NFTs, huh? Them's the new thing that's got people in heated debate. I'm not really sure if it's worth explaining what they are, because at this point, they've been shoved so far down everyone's throats that I think everyone knows the deal. Essentially, NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, are like a digital commodity. Could be a picture, could be a song, video game, video game item, but it's backed by something called a blockchain, so that proves it's like unique and that you own the real thing. I don't know if that's enough to explain it. Honestly, do your own research. I've got a video to make. My opinion on NFTs, I'm mostly neutral, actually. I know that's a pretty unpopular take because it seems that a lot of people just really do not like these things, but I like to think I take a more nuanced take when it comes to these sorts of things. The way I see it, NFTs are a new sort of thing, right? They've kind of yet to find the purpose. So while it might just be randomly generated JPEGs now, who knows? Maybe it could end up being a legitimately useful tool. Now, sure, there's a whole deal with the environment, but it's like I said, it's a developing technology. I see it fit that at the current time, there'd be a few setbacks. On the other hand, I have my issues with it. For one, it seems to be a tool that celebrities love using to make a quick buck off their gullible fans. You know, they'll buy these NFTs, tweet about it, yeah, I bought this NFT, looks pretty cool, right? They put it up for auction, and people scramble to try and get it, because, well, a celebrity owns it, that means it's gotta have value, huh? It's just another way for a celebrity to sell out, except it's a lot easier than doing a commercial or something. Something else I'm pretty suspicious of is how companies seem real interested in this sort of thing. They're catching on to this NFT technology real fast. I'm seeing a lot of companies on Twitter talking about how they're gonna implement NFTs on their platform. That sort of stuff just makes me real uneasy. When a bunch of companies start shoving the same product down your throat, it makes me a little wary. I don't know what them corporate bigwigs are planning with them, but I don't want nothing with it. All this talk brings me to the topics of today's video. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcinski said that NFTs and crypto could present a previously unimaginable opportunity. Well, this comes from YouTube's own blog. Letter from Susan, our 2022 priorities. Under the section, additional sources of revenue. We're also looking further ahead to the future and have been following everything happening in Web3 as a source of inspiration to continue innovating on YouTube. The past year in the world of crypto, non-fungible tokens, and even decentralized autonomous organizations has highlighted a previously unimaginable opportunity to grow the connection between creators and their fans. We're always focused on expanding the YouTube ecosystem to help creators capitalize on emerging technologies, including things like NFTs, while continuing to strengthen and enhance the experiences creators and fans have on YouTube. So, obviously there's not a lot to go off of here. They mostly just hint at NFT and crypto integration. They don't really bring up any specific specifics or even if they'll implement it at all they're just kind of you know hinting at it that being said i think there's room for speculation here i think the way they're gonna like implement crypto is pretty obvious you know instead of using normal currency for something like the join button or you know super chats you can use bitcoin or something like that as far as nfts go my only guess is they'll give you the option to like mint your video as an nft and i guess if you really wanted to you could sell them for cash now maybe there's more than meets the eye and we'll just have to see but imagine if that sort of thing went through through, I think it would be pretty amusing. I can just imagine all the YouTubers who used to be really big that just fell off. You see them every now and then. YouTubers obviously passed their prime. They've got millions of subscribers, but they only get like 10,000 views a video. I already know they're gonna start desperately cashing in to make a little money off of their Don channels. In a way, I think it's gonna make the platform a lot more interesting. When a YouTuber starts selling off their videos as NFTs, you just know that they are way past their prime. They fell off. Their career's dead, and they'll do whatever they can to squeeze is just a few more bucks out of it. I'll say, whatever YouTube's planning to do with the NFT technology, the way I see it, as long as I'm not forced to as long as I'm not forced to use it, I'm fine with it. As long as it don't affect me or my channel none, they can put whatever crypto crap they want. Now, if it is forced on me, then I'll have more of a problem with it. I don't want none of my videos to be NFTs, I just don't really want it. I just don't see the point. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. All I'll say is, if YouTube's really gonna go down this route, well, it's not the worst change they can make. They've done worse, like removing dislikes. Actually, that's pretty funny. Like, if someone uploaded a video as an NFT, and you could see that the video was an NFT, it would probably get downvoted to hell because that's just the sentiment around them. Maybe that's why they did it. So, NFT videos wouldn't get downvoted. I don't know. A higher up from Ubisoft, his name's Nicholas Poward. Is that how you say it? God damn, I, I don't like these. Ubisoft French, what's the deal with these French names, man? Gave an interview to what looks to be some no-name crypto website. No offense to the website, but these guys seem like pushovers. Probably why Ubisoft did the interview with them. You ever notice that these, like, game companies never give interviews to people who will ask the hard-hitting questions? 
Really makes you think, huh? You've probably seen a lot of game companies like Sega or you know, Square Enix announce they're gonna try out NFTs, try implementing it into their games, but the gaming community is pretty united in their disdain for it, and honestly, I can't blame them. Seems to me it's just another way to put microtransactions in their games just with different wrapping, and frankly, I play video games to have fun, not as a financial tool. I want to invest time in my games, not money. So a while back, you guys probably heard about it, Ubisoft did attempt some stuff with some, you know, NFTs. I think it was with a game called Ghost Recon that I don't think anyone really played that game. It got scrapped or something, but I guess they ain't done yet. After all, there's money to be made here, and these companies need their dough. Naturally, we won't be looking over the entire interview for Tom's sake, but there's some interesting stuff here. Namely, the video version of the interview has just over a thousand views, but only eight likes. My videos get more than that. That ain't a good sign. I guess it's worth bringing this up. Note, this interview was conducted in English, which is a second language for both Poward and Genevois. So if you want some benefit of the doubt, there you go. I will say this entire interview is a mess, but to give these guys the benefit of the doubt, and I asked someone who works with a variety of clientele at his job, I work with a lot of different nationalities, a lot of these people, English ain't their first language. No, I understand. The language barrier can be a tricky thing to resolve, so to an extent, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of willing to excuse it, I, I guess. Gamer feedback to the Ubisoft Quartz and Digits launch, oh uh, that's like Ubisoft's NFT platform, has been generally negative. What has the feedback told you about the prospects of mainstream NFT success? Well, it was a reaction we were expecting. We know it's not an easy concept to grasp, but Quartz is really just the first step that should lead to something bigger. Something that will be more easily understood by our players. Okay, so that's an interesting move right there. Pretty much insulting the intelligence of the gaming community. Generally, that's uh, not what you want to do because after all, these are your customers. But then again, I ain't a businessman, so what do I know, I guess? That's the way we think about it, and while we will keep experimenting, we will keep releasing features and services around this first initiative, and our belief is that piece by piece the puzzle will be revealed and understood by our players. We hope they will better understand the value we offer to them. Well, I think most people know what NFTs are and what they do, and that's why they don't want it. That's why they don't want it in their video games, because they know where it's gonna go. They know it's a gateway to more ludicrous microtransactions that ultimately you guys can profit off of. It's a gateway to games becoming financial tools rather than, you know, something you play to have fun on. And that last bit too, we hope they will better understand the value we offer them. Jesus Christ on a unicycle. Do you not understand how condescending that makes you sound? Buzz off, dude. You spoke in your presentation about improving the relationship with players. That is your goal with Quartz. It must be quite frustrating to see the feedback you've received. It's a part of the process, I would say. It's a reaction we are accustomed to. Well, you wouldn't have to be so accustomed to it if you actually made good business decisions. Maybe then your feedback would be a little more positive positive. I think it's great because it shows how engaged our players are and how passionate they are about their hobby and gaming in general. Looking at that, I think it's reassuring somehow. It shows that our players love what we do and love Ubisoft's ability to offer good games, so that's cool. What do I even say to this? Like, you're being endlessly criticized for this decision, people not only dislike but despise the direction you're heading in and you somehow interpret that as, players love what we do. I get where he's coming from, I suppose. He's kind of saying, well, they might not like what we're doing, but that just shows that they're passionate enough about our work to criticize it, to point it in the right direction, which okay, fair play, but the fact that you're blatantly ignoring the feedback that's telling you to not go with this, you know, NFT push, but you're pursuing it anyways, I think it says a lot about your company. Clearly, you don't care enough about your fan base, not enough to listen to them anyways. You just want another revenue stream to prop up your company. Still, obviously, we are a bit frustrated, but I think overall it's okay, and it's something we can really understand. We so strongly believe that what we are doing with Quartz and Digits goes in the right direction, so we will keep integrating, obviously listening to what our fans are telling us and how they're telling us as we go, so we can also adapt what we're doing and where we're going. So that's the next move, to make sure what we're doing will make even more sense to the game. Well, ain't that convenient, cause I'm a gamer, and I want you to make sense of something for me. You say you're listening to your fans, what they're telling you, right? Well, I think your fans are telling you that NFTs are not the way to go. They shouldn't be implemented in your games, and yet you're still trying to integrate it. That don't make sense to me, so, so if some Ubisoft rep can, you know, kinda clear up this misunderstanding, I would appreciate it. Well, let's talk about making sense of it. What do you think is the big positive that gamers are missing about what NFTs like Digits can offer them? I think gamers 
just don't get what a digital second market can bring to them. Well, already you're wrong there. I mean, I'd say the Steam market, where you can buy things like trading cards, weapon skins, all that jazz, functions pretty similarly to what you're describing here. Gamers do understand what a digital secondary market can bring to them because we already have it. And frankly, I think the Steam market is just embarrassing. I mean, hundreds of dollars for a goddamn skin in CSGO? That's laughable. And if that's any indication for what NFTs can bring to us, well, I'm not too enthusiastic. Also, again, gotta love that condescending attitude. Doesn't really help your case, just saying. For now, because of the current situation and context of NFTs, gamers really believe it's first destroying the planet and second, just a tool for speculation. But what we at Ubisoft are, are seeing first is the end game. The end game is about giving players the opportunity to resell their items once they're finished with them or they're finished playing the game itself. So again, I can kind of get behind that. NFTs are a new thing. So, you know, again, it's fit for there to be some setbacks. What I find interesting is they talk about being able to resell video game items, but they don't talk about reselling the game itself. One of the problems I have with digital game ownership, like Steam, right, is you can't really sell your games when you're done with them, right? Unlike physical games, you can't land digital stuff. It ain't possible. What I'm trying to say here is if the video game itself is a non-fungible token able to be freely traded, it could present a lot of opportunities. You could buy used video game NFTs cheaper, for example, similar to how you can get used games cheaper at GameStop. Am I making sense here? I'm sorry, this blockchain stuff is real confusing, but I don't think game companies are gonna do that. They're not gonna let you freely buy and sell used digital copies of a video game because that's money being transferred that ain't being put into their pockets. They ain't getting their fair share, that's for sure. So yeah, I just find it funny how they prioritize video game items but not the video game itself. That's actually something that's brought up later in the interview, actually. Do you guys see a future where players own the games themselves, that the games are an NFT? That's a part of the case that we can explore, but it's not the focus today. So ain't that interesting? They have all these detailed answers for how they're gonna monetize in-game items. When a question asks if they'll use the technology to actually be more consumer friendly, they totally blow it off. Back to the question, because I think this quote sums up the entire interview quite nicely. So it's really for them. It's really beneficial, but they don't get it for now. Again, like really talking down to their community. They're practically saying, we know more than you. You just don't get it. I really don't know what to say about this dude. It, it makes my blood boil. Don't get me wrong. Seeing this guy just totally talk down to us, to me, man. I can't say much about it though. I think it speaks for itself. A lot of the feedback I read suggests that gamers view or fear NFTs being the new microtransactions or the new loot boxes that digits are gonna make gaming with Ubisoft more expensive. Are they right or wrong? Your observation is correct. The first point I would say is that digits are fully optional. It's something we've built outside the game's economy. So you can use quartz or you can choose not to use it. It's really a matter of personal choice. So there you have it. Their full intent is to use NFTs as like microtransactions, which considering how much the community hates microtransactions, I think it's pretty tone deaf to admit that that's what you're gonna use the tech for. Goes on to say, we're not gonna force you to use the NFTs, well, maybe not, but you're probably gonna heavily encourage the player to use them with, like, items with better stats and all that kind of stuff, you know? So the interview goes on, I gave it a good read, I really have nothing else to say about it. It's mostly just technical jarble from here on out. Here's the thing, I'm not even against NFTs in video games, I mean, who knows, maybe it could work, but honestly, this interview just muddied the waters for me, which is funny, right? This interview was skewed heavily in Ubisoft Ubisoft's favor. I mean, this is a website clearly made to promote crypto and NFTs. The questions really aren't that hard hitting, and yet this was just nothing but humiliating for Ubisoft, man. I mean, come on, half of these, like, interview answers are just gamers are too dumb to understand how much good NFTs can bring to the industry. You know, maybe underhandedly insulting your player base ain't a good way to get them on your side. If Ubisoft is really gonna do NFTs, though, I'm excited. Their sales are gonna plummet, I can tell you that. They'll put millions and millions of dollars into developing a game, and then it'll flop. And then what's gonna happen? Well, I'll be sitting in this very chair, laughing into my microphone, because Ubisoft dug up their own grave and they are lying in it, baby. Jesus, man. This interview is so aggravating. Like, I really hope that it's just the language barrier again. Like, I understand how confusing the language barrier can be. I understand, you know, how a lot of stuff gets lost in translation. So, maybe he didn't exactly exactly mean what he said, maybe. In any case, I don't know, I was pretty sympathetic towards NFTs, I thought maybe they could do some good, and well, I still kind of think that. But this interview, well, didn't exactly instill confidence, but that's all I've got for this shtick. So, do old Jack your favor and keep it groovy. Thank you, thank you very much.